of your life and cost 10,000 jobs and $400 million. Lauren, are you there? Hey, Gavin. Hey. Congratulations on your show on show. Was it Showtime? On which? Sorry? You have oh, a new show. I Abigail saw Breslin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's Abigail Breslin. I get mistaken for her quite a bit. I've signed a few napkins. Really? You should go into clubs. You should call clubs that say you're in New York or some big city and you want to go to the front of the line. Call as Abigail's publicist and say you're going to be there tonight and then bring in like 50 chicks. You'll get bottle service. That's not an awful idea. Maybe we'll do that tonight. We'll take Milo with us. Yeah, I do it all the time. I call and I go, hi, Donald Sutherland is uh, dying of AIDS and he's looking pretty grim. He would like to come to your club tonight, though, for his last hurrah before uh, euthanasia. And then when they see me, they're really nice and they go, Jesus, Mr. Sutherland, you look like shit. And I go, thank you. And <laughs> free drinks. Let's take advantage of this celebrity shit. They're not. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> um, so you're in L.A. What are you doing there? Well, right now I'm just uh, chilling with Milo and Alum, but we've been kind of dealing with the slut walk shenanigans and the repercussions of going to a slut walk and disagreeing with the feminist narrative. As you've probably seen, we held up two signs, mine saying regret is not rape and Milo saying rape culture and Harry Potter, both fantasy. And now we've just kind of been doing interviews and reading all of our death threats on Twitter. <laughs> I mean, isn't it amazing the vitriol you get? Now, maybe I'm biased, but I feel like from our side, which I'll call the libertarian side or the non-liberal side, it's always mocking their points. Mm -hmm. And then when you, and, and pointing out contradictions or something. But when you get it from the left, it's, I hope you die. You know, Michelle Malkin is shooting ping pong balls from her pussy. Ann Coulter is a man in drag. Uh, kill yourself now is a common one. Well, it's really hard to attack our arguments. It's very hard to say that regret is rape. So they've just been calling me trash or saying you and Milo should drown yourself in his pool. I think I've gotten trash about 200 times. So they're not even creative with it. They've kind of got a playbook. Uh, trash, garbage, kill yourself. Oh, conservative, there you go. <laughs> What's the matter with trash? Right. How is that an insult? You mean I'm, I'm blue collar? I grew, I, my, my parents don't make a lot of money? I thought being a rich kid, a trust fund kid was the worst thing you could be. Now you can't be poor either? Apparently. Uh, wasn't everyone's favorite Sesame Street character, Oscar the Grouch, anyway? Yeah. He was literally trash. Wait, Milo, Milo told me he can't do the show. He's sitting next to you, picking his balls, watching gay porn? <laughs> no, I think he probably went out to a gay club somewhere. Okay, good. As long as he's not sitting there staring. Um... Now, you, you've been banned from Facebook, potentially. Yeah, no, this morning, the only thing I've posted the past uh, couple days has been Milo and I at the Slut Walk, and suddenly this morning I log in and it says I'm my account has been disabled. So I've disputed it, I've sent in my ID to Facebook and everything, and no reply yet, so we'll see what happens. I, I really wouldn't be surprised if it was because of the slut walk, though. It's amazing the power these stupid, young feminists have. And, and you know, that young girls are, are a huge part of the economy. I know in publishing, all book publishers say, is there a way you can twist it to make it sort of chick-friendly or get some girls like Nikki Glaser? I had to put her at the back of my book as a top quote because even books for boys are bought by their girlfriends. So they're a huge economic force, but they seem to be a big political force. They just helped shut down American Apparel. They're sh fucking with your life. They're a formidable <laughs> foe. Oh, they are. I don't know if you've been paying attention to the whole cyber violence thing at the UN with Anita Sarkeesian and Zoe Quinn, but they're now trying to control all language on Twitter, Facebook, everything. It's insane, the political pull and sway they have simply by getting offended. Well, it's amazing that that even happened, that two fucking dumb cunt liberal feminist bloggers are sitting in front of the United Nations saying someone was mean to me on the internet. We've got, what's her name, Mahara Lala. What's her name, the one who the, the got shot the by the- The girl who got shot, yeah. Going to, she, she got shot by the Taliban for trying to get educated. We've got girls in Egypt dying of female circumcision, and you get a meeting with the UN because someone called you fat? 
Yeah, no, it's insane. And they're making tons of money off of their victim status. They love the mean tweets. They That's where they get their money and support from. And honestly, Anita was saying that it's the daily stuff. It's the saying you suck on Twitter that needs to be banned and censored. And honestly, Milo and I are getting, you should have had that food truck run over you. You guys should drown yourself, kill yourselves. We should be the ones at the UN. And I could help them out. I just uh, tell them how to turn off their computers. I could end the whole discussion. <laughs> We people are so mean to us. We're at the point where we shouldn't be reading those comments anymore. That's how bad it is. Hey, and they've got their block lists going too. Anyways, they can block everyone who disagrees with them. Yeah, the software's already taken care of this issue. This and Ch Summers was posting recently that okay, if you do want to get down to the nitty gritty, men get way more harassment than women anyway. Even if we were going to try to regulate this, it would end up being a man thing. And nobody cares because you have to man up and uh, <laughs> deal with it, right? We do. It's all the women yeah. that need to be helped. Okay, last question. I see you're running as a libertarian candidate in, in mm -hmm. Canada. I thought you were out. I thought everyone was trying to get you back in. Did, I guess it worked? Yeah, no, I got back in. Everyone, these petition to get me back in the party doubled the petition to kick me out and <laughs> even the yeah it was it was fantastic the support was amazing it's good to see free speech prevailing over the uh, feminist censorship nonsense so what so that's why so wait a minute so these fucking maniacs this huge omnipotent force this black cloud of feminism got you out of the libertarian party even though you think libertarians if the one thing they want it's freedom of speech it's, it's hilarious. Uh, this this year alone, I've been kicked out of the women's group on my campus. I've been kicked out of the Libertarian Party. I've been kicked out of a slut walk now simply for being a woman who disagrees with feminism. That doesn't sound like a patriarchy to me. Yeah. And it's it's you disagreeing with feminism in 2015. It's like, I, I always say I'm not concerned about racism anymore in 2015. But if it was 1965, I'd be a freedom rider on the bus, or at least I would appreciate them. <laughs> But exactly. it's in the context of the time. Yes, you should be a feminist in 1926. In 2015, we're done. Roll up the carpets. Leave the building. It's settled. Well, they're protesting to for nipple tape and tassels and to twerk in the park. It's nonsense. Yeah, I'd be out there protesting for the vote, but I'm not going to go out there and twerk to end rape. <laughs> twerk to end rape. That's perfect. All right, Lauren, thanks for coming on the show. We'd love to have you back Thanks ASAP. for having me. Good luck over there. Thanks.